Um, I'd like to hand over to uh, Teru Teruhisha Tajima from Entity Communication. Enjoy. I talk about how we operate NSO for our laboratory network, especially synchronization between real device conflict and CTB state. We have to solve this synchronization issue because we are changing configuration and topology by our hands, not only NSO provisioning. Today, I'll share our trials. Before I start to talk this topic, I'm going to introduce our company and myself. Our company, Entity Communications, is one of the largest ISP in the world. We develop and operate many circuits, data centers, servers, applications, and so on, for business and consumer customers. My job is research and develop about new networking features and operations. Okay, let's start talk about NSO. Before talking our trials, I show you the typical data flow of making configuration in NSO. NSO developer define abstract model describing what my service is. Operator or other system modifies that service config. When someone changing service config, NSO translate it to device config and deploy it to real switches and routers. In device config storage, left count is a counter, which is how many service config depends on each device config. Counter is an important concept in my trial. NSO increase or decrease discount when translate service config to device config. And using discount, NSO determine whether the setting should be currently in place or not. I mentioned this left count later. So at almost all projects, especially in Greenfield, that's all. Because operation, uh, because operators we use only NSO terminals or API to control their devices after have deployed their system. The data stream one direction. However, we are not such project. In typical migration from Brown field, once we have built service config from device config, the migration is completed. That operating service operating service config is only way to change network, same as previous example of Greenfield. But in our environment, we want to change config manually outside of NSO, such as this figure. Some operators modify service config and at the same time, the other operators modify device manually. We named it blowing brownfield. There are two reasons why we want this. The main reason is considering the balance of implementation cost and its effect. To implement logic about rare and difficult operation is complicated and its effect is limited. So we want to avoid this implementation cost and we decide to use our hands in such difficult operation. We often change topology and integrate new equipment and features. So we think this balance is important point of automation tool. We also considered about balance in NED. We try to develop NED for training and we use handmade NED, but it doesn't cover full capability of network equipment. The other reason is engineer training. We usually use our network to on, to on the job training of our team members. And we want to know how to develop and operate NSO. Our trials in, is in such situation. In this presentation, I'll show you two key benefits. The first is we define multi vendor topology service model to change topology after deployed NSO. The second is we think 
status between NSO and device C by using redeploy and reconcile after the manual configuration. In the beginning, I explain a use case. This is an example of changing topology drastically. This example is what we actually did in this match. We often change our network topology because of circuit outage, integrate new equipment, or other reasons. In this case, we aim to resolve cascade connection, which cause narrowband wheels and change circuit. So we want to change the topology from left side to right side. Before this operation, switch A, B, and 1 to 4 are operated by NSO. And we were going to insert switch C and 5. This is three operation steps in this work. The first step is insertion of switch C and switch 5. It is done before changing physical connections. The second step, changing cable connections. The third step, configuration of NSO. We clear unused connection and set left count to correct value. The first and the second step is trivial. I'll describe the third step. The third step, post configuration, is equal to NSO maintenance. In this step, we set physical connection correctly. As I said before, we did three operations to set left count correctly. This figure shows physical connection and CDB state. Before we start synchronized state, thus, CDB config shows incorrect topology. So, fit subs config to physical connection. And redeploy with no networking. This command does not affect any configuration of real device. In this case, CDB config shows same topology, but device config status is out of sync. We did sync from and match CDB config to device config. In this case, each line of CDB device config has incorrect left count. To resolve left count, we did redeploy and reconcile. Finally, we got in sync CDB status. The downside of this strategy is that it takes a lot of time. Each commit takes a few seconds to tens of seconds. We did this operation through about eight hours with scripting. To achieve such operation, I'm going to talk about uh, to these two topics. The first topic is service model implementation. We try to orchestrate our lab network. Our network consists of some vendors and uh, some vendor switches and routers. I'll show you an implementation using augment to abstract service model. The second topic is sync configuration between NSO CDB and devices. I'll show you how to resolve inconsistency in these states. Let's start. First topic, service model implementation. I'll describe our lab to develop service model. We have some data center racks in metro area. In our lab, some project member test feature or operability of many network equipment. And also, sometimes our lab network is testing device. In such our lab, our network provides layer two VLAN connectivity. Our network consists of some VPN circuits and over 100 multi vendor switches and routers. They are part of vendor list we operate. When we implement our network service, we develop the following four components. Especially service discovery is translate logic from device config to service config. We also develop NED because there is no driver of some national vendors or old operating systems. I'll show you how to define topology in our service model.
Our love network is providing end-to-end -end layer to VLAN connectivity. We need to calculate connection, connection paths in CVGRAY. For example, in this topology, we want to connect from switch A port 10 to switch C port 20. We divide this connection to how to chart intermediate paths and how to store the endpoint end port. Because in normal operation without changing topology, we operate only the end port model. In order to configure all intermediate transit switches, we have to list up all switches between switch A and C. We want to know how each switches are connected. We define this service model of physical connections. It stores which switches and its port is connected to another switch. Of course, switches and routers are registered as a device. We can use Young model validation. From this data, we can calculate shortest path between any two switches. Next. We define endpoint model. This is an implementation of endpoint model. It seems very simple, but this model is difficult in multi-vendor network. In multi-vendor network, how should we define endpoint lift correctly? The problem equal to how to describe this one port in Young model. Each vendor has different model. So we cannot define one leaf in Yang, such as a leaf ref. It seems there are some strategies about this problem, but we use augments. Using augments seems the best choice to implement such model. In this strategy, there is an empty container in service Yang model to inject each vendor model. And in each vendor model, it defines augment model. Upside is many things. Suggestion, complement, validation, and easy to add new vendor. When we add new vendor, simply we add another young model file. Downside is almost nothing. This is an example service config of using augment. The service config shows some vendors and each vendor model is separated into each file. Next topic is how to resolve inconsistency between NSO and device. What is in the inconsistency? Here is one situation that someone changes device manually. First of all, service config, device config, and devices are synced with commit A. At some point, someone changing device manually with commit B. And another operator try to change service config with commit C. But this operation will be failed because device state is different from device config. If we do this operation, we need to solve this inconsistency equal to sync device state to NSO CDBs. Here is another situation, changing topology drastically. It is when we change left side topology to right side topology. Once you start operation with NSO, you need to consider the difference of, uh, difference of before and after state, but it sounds it sometimes be become difficult question by changing size. To avoid this question, stopping calculate the difference. We should reveal service config from current device config after changing topology. I'll show you service discovery step and ref counts. Service discovery means reveal service config from device config. We implement this service discovery is an action. This figure shows each config after the service, config, service discovery. Service discovery reveals service config. Each line of device config has left count. Left count. 
And in this situation, it has hidden one count. This count is originated by real device, and unfortunately, it doesn't show at the show command. Next, we do redeploy. Each configs are independent, if only service discovery. By trying to deploy service config, redeploy recognize which service config generate, generate which device config and make a relationship between service and device config. Then def count is increased. But it is not complete, still has hidden, hidden def count. Finally, we do reconcile. Reconcile check each device config is generated by service config and clear hidden def count. After we do reconcile, device config status, especially def count, is the same status as deployed it only by NSO. So if we delete its service config, the related device config will be deleted. Of course, we consider another method. There are two examples in this slide. How about using partial sync to and from? It seems work well if partial region is defined easily. For example, one service model affects limited number of devices and limited hierarchy of configuration. But many cases are not so. We should use sync from for configuration. How about using NSO at all situations? I think this is not a good idea because there is a lot of type of operations, what sometimes happen to what often happen. And such a case needs careful logic and cause big impact for networking. So classifying by operate operation frequency, if the operation happened many times, then fit to NSO. Although if the operation happened few times, do it by hand and sync NSO. This story is our trials. This is conclusion. Our case is not fit to NSO standard users, but in such case, we searched exchange operation with NSO because we want that automation tool will release us from boring routing work. And we acquired two skills. The one is implementation using augment. It provides it provide us easy deployment in multi vendor environment and easy operation of changing topology. The another one is controlling ref count. It provides us both operations by hand and by NSO, and it prevents us from implementing difficult and rare situation. Unfortunately, I think there are not many cases which our system will be fit, but it shows a part of NSO capability. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Teresa, for a great presentation. All right, so this is Hiro from Cisco. Uh, so I would like to move on to the, ne uh, to the next one, is a live Q&A session. So uh, whoever uh, has any questions, uh, feel uh, feel free to uh, put your questions on the app uh, that Yon uh, explained at the beginning of the session. And I already got uh, uh, the couple of questions, so let me start with that. So Teresa, uh, we have he, uh, uh, we have him uh, here as well. So let me ask you the first question. The first one is, uh, how did you run the system which you shared in the session? So could you uh, take the question and give us the answer? Yes, uh, so Teresa, it would be great if you could uh, talk louder a bit. Okay, uh, can you hear the story? Uh, the answer is, uh, I said the answer. Uh, we do this system in two ways. Uh, one is shown in this session. We use step-by-step enlargement. And the other way is daily 
million jobs uh, in our network, most of changes are small, so the process can do things from service discovery and redeploy in early morning. After that, operators check its results. All right, thank you. And then I got more questions, so let me move on to the next one. The next one is, uh, did you have any issue by working with multi-vendor devices, especially a CDB migration? Um, we didn't encounter such CDB issue. I think the reason is that each of the models namespace are dedicated. And I'm trying to upgrade NS version from 5.7 to 5.3 to upgrade trial. There is no problem, but I don't know what issue happened in NSO when they read some models because we did not do that. Okay, thank you, Teresa. So you'll be better if, if you could talk a little bit louder, you know, so that the camera switches to you. Okay, and then I got more questions coming on the app. Uh, next one is, uh, you know, you talk about. Uh, the new topology stuff, but did you consider uh, the IETF topology model? Uh, no, we didn't try. Uh, so we did try and error to implement model due to training or changing model. So I, so we didn't consider it. Okay, thank you so much. And the, let me move on to the next one. Uh, I got uh, many questions here. The next one is, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, on these days of COVID-19, uh, how to reduce time cost, you know, uh, you know, under this COVID-19 temptation? Do you have, so do you have any comment on that? I don't have enough idea. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. All right, and then next one is, uh, so do you see any errors by working with uh, minor operations? So if so, how do you handle that? Uh, so the operator tells our uh, DevOps team, uh, we started troubleshooting. Most of errors are caused by ref counts. For example, operator delete, con uh, delete configs, which still has ref count. We try to delete it with no networking and commit and try sync from. Okay, it's good here. Uh, that's uh, handled by the operation uh, team. Okay. So the next one is uh, regarding the performance. I have this, the similar questions, uh, multiple questions, but what is the performance? How fast the commit uh, was? So, um, unfortunately, uh, each commit takes tens of seconds or a few minutes. Uh, indeed, we can turn commit speed, but we prefer maneuverability of code because in our environment, each time cost does not matter. Okay. okay, I understand that it takes uh, tens of seconds and you know, since it's in your lab, uh, you don't care how the, the NSO performance actually, okay. Okay, so I still have some questions, but unfortunately uh, we are running out of time. So, uh, so, so let me take the rest of the questions offline and then move on to the next one. Thank you very much, Arteriksa, for, you know, for having the very good sessions and, and the attending for the live session. Thank you.